season since 2011, just the third in the AP poll era, dating back to 1936. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, delighted to have you with us. We saw those four wins in the highlights as we came on the air for LSU against top 10 teams this season. Great resume, but despite that, Ohio State jumped them and went to number one this week, a surprise to many. Yeah, but they uh, proved that they earned that today. Ohio State was awesome. Look, at the end of the day, LSU just wants to be one of those final four teams standing after that last first weekend in December, but they want to stay close to Ohio State because that number one spot is the most coveted spot. They want to finish this perfect regular season. They want to avenge that controversial and emotional seven overtime loss to Texas A&M last year in College Station. A&M won the toss and deferred, so they kicked off, and Braden Mann's boot is a touchback. Down on the field with more about last year, here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, the last time these two teams met, as you said, Sean, it was a crazy game. The longest in FBS history, the most points scored. So many historic categories were set in that game. In fact, they had to change the overtime rules. It got so crazy. Players we spoke to said they could barely walk off the field. They were exhausted, but the guys are using it as motivation tonight. LSU used it all through the summer. They remember they lost that game, whether it was in conditioning, on the field. They know that they have got a chance at redemption. That was their last loss. They've won 12 in a row since. Joe Burrow, leading Heisman Trophy candidate, takes off running, gets dragged down along the far sideline. Fans want a flag, they and they it. get one as Justin Matabike ran him down. Well, credit Matabike for the hustle play coming from his defensive tackle spot. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number 52 on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Very first play of the game, they forced Joe Burrow to leave the pocket, and there it is, clearly behind the back of the jersey, pulling down Joe Burrow. It was a very good defensive play, but just a bad result at the end, and uh, penalty on Matabike. Matt Leffler is the referee leading this SEC crew. LSU trying to make history. They've already punched their ticket to the SEC title game. Next weekend in Atlanta against Georgia. Very low snap by Lloyd Cushenberry. Here's Clyde Edwards Elaire, who's been magnificent, particularly lately. One of the 10 semifinalists for the Doak Walker Award is the best running back in the country. He got just across the 45 yard line. Joe Burrow completing 79% of his passes, just a tick under. Comfortably ahead of the FBS record set by Texas's Colt McCoy back in 2006. Such a different pass offense, Sean. They used to be a lot of max protection. Now they protect with five and they release five into the route almost exclusively. Burrow steps up, dumps it off. There's Justin Jefferson across midfield and down at the Aggies 44. Here's tonight's Chick fil A impact players. Clyde Edwards Hilaire has just been so dominant, not as a runner, but also as a receiver. Jamar Chase, part of that trio of great receivers. Matabike and Buddy Johnson pace the way defensively for the egg. Johnson, their leading tackler. Play fake by Burrow. So good at dodging the run and throwing on the run. He's on target to Jamar Chase inside the AM 15. He leads the country in receiving yards per game, 126 yards per game for Jamar Chase. Well, two times on this drive, A&M's been able to move Joe Burrow off his spot, but he has been cool and kept his eyes downfield. They get up there very quickly. It didn't look like the Aggies were ready for the snap after the 31 completion Burrow to Chase. There's Edwards Hilaire down to the five-yard line, and again, the Tigers look to get to the line briskly. You're right, they caught AM kind of looking around, trying to get set up, going to try to go quickly again. Edwards Elaire, touchdown! What a start for LSU. Number one still in the AP poll, number two in the college football playoff rankings, and Joe Burrow's family enjoys the terrific start for Coach Ed Ogeron. You wondered if there might be a little rust with the senior day activities. Doesn't look like it. Burrow, one of 14 seniors honored before the game. He got a huge ovation. Of course, he played here for just two years. The starter both of his seasons at LSU, Cade York, 
the true freshman kicks the extra point. It's already seven to nothing. You know, we talk so much about the receivers in the passing game, but watch the receivers and the tight ends block on this play. They lined up, they went quick. All three guys get solid blocks on the edge of the defense. And Clyde Edwards Elaire walks into the end zone to score the first touchdown of the ball game. Saw the graphic he adds to his SEC lead in rushing touchdowns with his 16th of the year. Coming off a 188 yard rushing game last week against Arkansas in their easy win against the Razorbacks. 188 yards on six carries. Right. Yeah, they were going to take him out because they were winning handily, and his last carry was an 89-yard touchdown. Right, he had 99 right. yards, and they told the coaches that, so they put him in for one more, and right. he made the most of it. Yeah. Went 89. 188 yards on six carries is the most yards by an FBS player in the last 20 years on six carries or fewer. Well, we got the sense, and really, after that Arkansas game, these LSU players started talking yes. a lot about Texas A&M, the memory of last year. They thought they had the game won a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, they said, we're not big on revenge. It's about you know, completing the regular season in the right way. But you sensed all week there is some extra motivation on top of everything else that the Tigers have to play for after what happened in College Station last year. Avery Atkins, the touchback. And once again, here's Holly. Well, guys, you mentioned that it's senior day here in Tiger Stadium and a very special entrance. The last player introduced was Joe Burrow, not the B-U-R-R-O-W. He came out with a special nod to the Cajun Creole fan base that have welcomed him so much from Ohio. They went crazy when they saw the way the back of his jersey was spelled. Of course, he has changed back to his jersey on the sideline, the correct spelling, but such a great shout out and a loving gesture from Joe Burrow and the LSU Tigers seniors to this fan base. Wow. What a year, magical year for the team, but for that guy in particular, two years at Ohio State, did not play very much, attempted about 45, 46 passes, looked for a place to go, made the decision to come here, became the starter right away, joined the kind of the program late, yeah. And, uh, you know, got better as the year went on, played his best his last couple games, and then this year has just been unbelievable, the kind of season. To the point where he is the Heisman Trophy front runner, and here's how he compares to some Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks. Most passing yards by a Heisman Trophy winner through 11 games, Ty Depper. Touchdown passes through 11, Andre Ware. Completion percentage 74.2, so he's already mangling that. A great performance by RG3. Yeah. Pretty cool little uh, graphic there, but I think if he goes to New York, which he assuredly will, he'll have a purple tie on instead of a red tie. Ray Thornton injured on the kickoff and being helped off. Junior, special teams player primarily for Louisiana State University. So here comes Texas A&M on offense for the first time already in a 7-0 hole, led by Kellen Mond. They want to be very aggressive early in this game offensively. I talked to Daryl Dickey on the field before the game, said we're going to use a lot of multiple formations, and we're Outside. going to go after them early. Number 72 on the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Tyler Shelvin offside. Daryl Dickey is the offensive coordinator for the Aggies helps Jimbo Fisher with the play calling, but the head coach calls the plays. The other Texas A&M quarterback who passed for 7,000 plus and rushed for 1,000 or more in his career with the Heisman Trophy winner, Johnny Manziel. Deep drop by Mon, floats one out of bounds in the general direction of Courtney Davis with Kerry Vincent in coverage. LSU came with pressure from Grant Delpit, who did not play. There's Jimbo Fisher, one of the best play callers. In fact, when we talked to Dave Aran, he says he is very difficult to prepare for. It's like Dan Mullen, really schemes you up well, shows a lot of stuff to you early. A lot of respect for Jimbo Fisher. Mon Jr. from San Antonio, Texas. Option look. He takes off running. And gets bounced out of bounds, shy of the 45. Well, that looks a lot, Todd, like the game we saw a couple of weeks ago when the old Miss quarterback 
John Rice Plumley ran up and down the field against this Tiger defense and Jimbo Fish said oh yeah we took notice yeah. of what the Rebels did in that game. And it was outside runs by John Rice Plumley that really hurt this LSU defense. That was a little different style. Ole Miss did a lot of counter quarterback run. That was just a quarterback sweep with good blocking on the perimeter but it was getting outside to the edge of the defense. Isaiah Spiller, true freshman running back. They lost Jay Sean Corbin, who would have been their featured back in game two of the season at Clemson. And Spiller has emerged yeah. nicely in recent weeks. He's developing. He's going to be a really good one. And they've got to run the football better than they did a week ago. They only had minus one yards total rushing on 20 carries against that very good Georgia defense. And they can't afford to be one dimensional. They've got to be able to mix in the run enough and the quarterback run will be a big part of that tonight. I guess it matters who you're playing. Georgia great up front the week before A&M ran for 319 yeah. yards against South Carolina. Obviously a much different defense than what the Bulldogs possess. Incomplete pass intended for Jalen Weidermeyer. Another true freshman who's become one of their best playmakers. Now that that's a good throw and that's a catch that Weidermeyer needs to make again they don't have to play a perfect game but they have to be clean that's a good throw it's a chance to get a first down and avoid this third and long and Weidermeyer just took his eyes off the football and then with a chance to make history tonight knocking off the number one team in the AP poll this is the third team that they've played that was number one in the country in the AP poll at the time of their meeting they lost at Clemson, they lost to Alabama. Now they have a shot at number one in the AP poll, LSU. Third down and eight. Mon, deep throw, nobody home. And a little mix up with Anaya Smith. Anaya Smith is a wide receiver that's starting to play more and more. Another true freshman that they're really high on, but that was clearly a miscommunication between he and his quarterback, Kellen Mon. Kellen Mon threw that like a fade. And Anaya Smith was breaking it out on the out Intentional route. Intentional grounding on the offense, number 11. Spot foul, loss of down, fourth down. So I, I don't agree with that. I, I, you, you can't call intentional grounding. He got mixed up with his receiver and threw thinking that was going to be a deep route. That, that's not intentional grounding. He wasn't throwing the football away. He just got confused on the route that his receiver was running. I, I disagree with that call completely. We'll bring in Bill Lamagne when we have a moment. Obviously, Jimbo Fisher agrees with you. Here's Braden Mann. Ray Guy Award winner last year is the best punter in the country. He's having another excellent year. That one bounds all the way into the end zone. 62-yard punt. Coach Fisher still hot. 7-0 Tigers. Let's bring in our rules expert, Bill Lamagne. Bill, what did you think about the intentional grounding call against Kellen Mond, the head coach Fisher, so upset? I don't like the call. And the reason I don't like the call first is the quarterback was not under duress. And that's one of the requirements. There was nobody uh, right. on him that forced him to make a throw. The second thing is that referee needs to know he doesn't know what's happening downfield. He's relying on his other crew members to help him out. Yeah, I wish the official would have read that that pass was was thrown only because receivers ran a bad route. Joe Burrow quick pass to Justin Jefferson. He has a lot of shake and bake as the coaches told us last night. That's the description Steve Ensminger used the offensive coordinator and that was on display as Jefferson weaved ahead for 15. When they get in these empty sets and they put the tight end and the running back out wide they want to work inside to Jefferson and Chase. They're both so good with the ball after the catch. Burrow, that one batted down, intended for Jamar Chase. Debian Renfro broke it up. It's a physical defensive play that time by Renfro because Chase is the most physical of the LSU wide receivers, and they were locked up pretty good on the sideline and uh, forced the incompletion. Both Chase and Jefferson, over a thousand yards receiving for the season. The only other duo on the same team with a thousand yards receiving. Those Minnesota Golden Gophers, Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman. After the run fake, a beautiful throw by Burrow. 
He's now four out of five as he hit Jamar Chase for 14 more. Here's a safety coming on a blitz. Joe Burrow sees it. It's an RPO. And throw right behind that safety in the voided area on the slant route. Edwards E. Lair stacked up, bounces off the pile. And he might have cost himself a yard or two. Valiant effort to try to escape. But the Aggies take him down behind the line. Anthony Hines dropped it for a loss of two. And Miles Jones, the starting corner, number 10, a little slow getting off, off the pile. Lucky he's holding his arm. He's up here. And now we got the safety, Damani Richardson, down on the field. Miles Jones, something with his left arm or shoulder at the end of that play, trying to catch a breather now. He helped himself with his performance as the Buckeye quarterback yeah. today. Well, and you know, the problem with that team, you have three guys that in any other year legitimately could be a Heisman guy. J.K. Dobbins is a dominant running back, and then you've got Chase Young and Justin Fields playing lights out. All three on the number one team in the country right now. Second and 11, Joe Burrow four out of five for 69 yards. Two completions each to Chase and Jefferson. Hilaire goes out wide. They like to work inside. Burrow flushed out of the pocket by Jaden Peavy and turns it into a first down to the 38 of AM. 13 yards. Here's Matt Berry in the studio. Sean McDonough, would you believe me if I told you the Iron Bowl came down to another kick? Joseph Bulovis goes doink off the left, upright. Auburn has the ball back with under a minute to play, up three. Wow, what a game that has been. Would have never thought Alabama could score that many points with Mac Jones against that Auburn defense. Edward G. Lair, nifty run. To the delight of the crowd he got five and here's a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by PlayStation as we mentioned Ohio State jumped over LSU and the committee said they now look like the more complete team offense and defense yeah. I think the committee would love to see a really strong performance yes. by the LSU defense that's what they want to see I think and they'll have two good opportunities today against A&M and then the SEC championship game against a highly ranked Georgia team that looks like had more offense today than they've had the last couple weeks. Aggies bring pressure. Edwards Elaire runs right by it. Tackled by Leon O'Neill, but it's a first down. Eight yards for Clyde Edwards Elaire, junior from right here in Baton Rouge out of Catholic High School. A great job by Lloyd Cushenberry on that, picking up the blitz. He's an excellent center. Burrow, Forrest back. Edwards E. Lair, game of block. Burrow takes off again. When he runs, it's often a first down. 34% of his rushes this season have resulted in first downs. Highest percentage in the country. Such great decision making. We've seen him twice already run and throw. These times, two on this drive where he's rolled out of the pocket and run. He knows when to run and when not to run. He hands it off, and Edward Zeller gets buried by Justin Matabike, part of that excellent defensive front, particularly in the middle. Matabike along with Bobby Brown, number five. Matabike is one of the best players in this league. He is so quick and athletic for a 300-pound guy. His first step is like lightning on the inside. Number 52, here he is right here. Very hard to deal with because of his quickness. Bobby Brown is just a massive human being. The guy lined up next to him. Number five. Meanwhile, it is over. Dad Auburn and the Tigers beat Alabama 48-45. Burrow for the back corner of the end zone. Incomplete, looking for Terrace Marshall with Charles Oliver in coverage. So we welcome those of you who've been watching that classic Iron Bowl. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, and Holly Rowe. And Todd, you'd have to think, that takes Alabama yes. out of the college football playoff equation with yep. two losses. Absolutely. And now you're now you're looking at potential one loss Big 12 champion, potential one loss Pac-12 champion if Utah would win that game. It's going to get very interesting here in the last couple weeks. An A&M player goes down. That's Buddy Johnson, I think. They're starting middle linebacker. I'm not sure they would want 
I don't think he would be faking an injury because they need him on the field. He's their leader. Well, I don't know. Maybe they didn't have it lined up the way they wanted for that play. We saw them do that a few times last week at Georgia yeah. as well. And Ed Ogeron, <laughs> that's in disgust toward the A&M sideline yeah. coaches. And I would tend to agree with him. They did that a yeah. few times last year, uh, last week, in their loss at Georgia, and it seemed pretty blatant watching it on television. The only reason I didn't think it was that is because he's such an integral part on the inside of their defense. He does that. Now he has to come out on this critical third down play. To me, that's kind of a waste of a flop. If well, he's not a drama major. We could tell <laughs> by the acting. He told us last night he's a sports management major, wants to be an agent someday. Andre White takes his place, number 32. He's a true freshman. And you got the tight end and the running back out wide. So the guys they look for right here, Jefferson and Chase on the inside slots. Working for some mesh routes, some cross routes involving those guys. On third and ten, seven minutes to go in the opening quarter. Wide open receiver, Justin Jefferson, a touchdown for LSU. His 10th red zone receiving touchdown, his 13th of the season. Justin Jefferson is the best route runner of that group, and he just put a beautiful route on his defender to get wide open for the touchdown. Cade York for the point after. He hooked it, but it is good. So 13 touchdown catches this year for Jefferson. The school record prior to this year for a single season was 12 by Dwayne Bowe. Both Jefferson and Chase have now surpassed that this season. A great start for the Tigers. A sonic blockbuster. Unusually uh, warm night here in Death Valley, last day of November, and it is 75 degrees right now. Right up to the low 80s today here in the capital of Louisiana. They're enjoying what they've seen here so far. Impressive start for LSU. Already 140 yards of offense and two touchdowns. And Avery Atkins kickoff is another touchback. Let's take a look at the Buick drive recap. Well, again, they're, they're so good at wide receiver. Here's Jefferson. We talked about the in routes. He's going to show in and then go here. Here's the in route behind him. Marshall, the defenders for A&M, they kind of get confused. They try to pass it off. Nobody stays with Jefferson and Joe Burrow, who just knows exactly what they're trying to do with this offense. Five receivers out. Find your matchups. Get the ball to the open guy. Another touchdown pass for Joe. Now a single season point total record for LSU. Low throw behind Courtney Davis, but he managed to make the catch. And it's a 13-yard gain, Kellen Mond to Courtney Davis. Last week in the second half, Kellen Mond really threw the football well against Georgia. They realized they couldn't run. They kind of abandoned their running game. They put the game in Kellen Mond's hands to throw it. And he threw it very well against a very good Georgia defense. I think they're going to have to kind of do that right now. They've got to get some chunk plays out of their passing game. Mon faked it, kept it, and goes out of bounds along the near sideline. Here's Matt. Guys have our All-State Mayhem moment, and it's when Bo Nix took a knee on a win in the Iron Bowl. Since Nick Saban took over Alabama in 2007, no team has missed more field goals than the Crimson Tide with the 101. Auburn gets the win. What a win for Bo Nix in his first year as a starting quarterback, legacy quarterback at Auburn. Quite a year for him, starting with that dramatic come from behind win against Oregon in that neutral site game in Arlington, Texas. Isaiah Spiller chopped down by Maurice Hampton. Here's another look at the top ten, and 
Todd, for most of the teams at the top, a, a good day, convincing wins for Ohio State, Clemson, Georgia, yeah. and Baylor. Minnesota now out of the college football playoff ranking picture. That's a tricky one right there. Oklahoma trying to keep pace as well in Stillwater tonight. Not the easiest place to play. Of course, Baylor has to be brewing blowing the 25-point lead against Oklahoma for their only loss of the season. They'll get another shot at the Sooners in the Big 12 title game next Saturday. Mond straight ahead for the first down. Ducked under the hit of Maurice Hampton, the true freshman playing safety. And already in the first quarter, Sean, we've seen three by design quarterback runs for Kellen Mond. And that's certainly part of their plan, part of what Jimbo Fisher wants to do. Put the ball in his best player on offense's hands, whether it's throwing it or running it, and right now, that's Kellen Mond. Mond from San Antonio. Played his last year of high school football at IMG Academy in Florida with a lot of other outstanding players. His pass incomplete over the head of Courtney Davis. Weidemeyer, the tight end, was in on pass protection that time. It got driven right back into the legs of his quarterback that time, and that's why Kellen Mond didn't make a very good throw. Well, a lot of folks be watching with interest Tuesday night at 7, the latest reveal of the college football playoff top 25. Can't imagine any scenario by which LSU jumps over Ohio State Not after what one. Ohio State did today. If the committee thought the Buckeyes were number one last week, they didn't do anything to change that opinion as they handled Michigan with ease. Mond ahead again for two. Glenn Logan took him down. We're down to four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. This is the team in Texas A&M that leads the SEC in time of possession, and that's there's not a lot of teams that care that much about that anymore. And especially in a game like this, you've got to score. You want to possess the ball and keep it away from LSU's offense, but you better find ways to put points on the board at the end of possessions, or you won't be able to catch these guys. A&M does care about time of possession. They're among the national leaders in that category last year. In Jimbo Fisher's first year. In Aggieland, Mon gets buried back inside the 45. Caleb on chase on leading the way. Well, Chason's right here. He's going to run a stunt. See, they cover all the guys, and that makes the line have to block man protection. And Chason comes inside. They lose track of him, and he gets right to the quarterback with the hit on Kellen Mond. Good design on that pressure by Chason. 26 time Mond's been sacked, most in the SEC. It is an ordinary, at best, offensive line for AM. That has been a part of their struggles on offense. Braden Mann, another good punt. It'll be down at the nine-yard line. Well, we've talked about this LSU pass offense. Used to be so much max protection. Now it's five guys out in the route all the time. Last week, you look at Joe Burrow. His first look is to Clyde edwards helaire on the wheel route. He doesn't like what he sees here. So now I want you to watch the second choice. Watch Jefferson's technique. Pause, create separation, and run into that voided area. Five guys working together. This one out in the field, how they attack downfield. Again, five guys out. you got two underneath guys to dump it off. But you want to attack downfield and make that one safety. Try to guard two. Whichever way he goes, he's wrong. And they've been doing that all year. The change in the pass offense and the scheme of their pass offense is unbelievable this year. Of course, it's been well told. They brought in young Joe Brady from the New Orleans Saints to help revamp their passing attack. And that has worked wonders. You have to get Ev Ogeron credit for making that move. There's Brady in the middle of your screen. And you got to give that guy credit, too. Sure do. Because Steve Ensminger is still the offensive coordinator. And he said, I really enjoy working with Joe yeah. Brady. He's a fun guy to be around. And obviously, he's done a great job. And I talked to Joe before the game, Brady, and he said, and we were talking just about that, and he said, you know what? I don't know if I was in that position, if I could do it, if I could handle it the way Steve has. He's been unbelievable to work with. 
Kingsminger told us a couple of the weeks ago is here's Edwards Hilaire for a first down and he handles most of first and second down. Brady focuses on third down, red zone plays. They've been great in the red zone. It's a partnership that has worked very, very well. Kingsminger's not a big ego guy. He told us last year when he was asked to be the offense coordinator. He accepted it reluctantly yeah. because he knows when you're in that job, especially with a rabid fan base like they have here, you can get a lot of criticism if it doesn't go well. Right. And he wasn't sure he wanted to put his family through that. Another play fake by Burrow and a deep strike and an open receiver. Jamar Chase, another touchdown. Jamar Chase is just running a deep post and the safety on his side Richardson was peeking on the crossing route and got run by If you're the deep safety you have to be the deepest defender and that time the young freshman Made a calculated mistake and Jamar Chase ran right by him and again Joe Burrow does not miss guys He does not miss open receivers and if you make a mistake he's gonna find it and we talked about his completion percentage, 79% for the year. He's going to set the FBS record. It's not a dink and dunk no, offense. He throws the ball down the field with great regularity and with great accuracy. This one is a 78-yard touchdown pass. Did I say there wasn't anything LSU could do to convince the committee maybe they should go back over Ohio State? We might have to rethink that. <laughs> so much more than a house. It's where family gets together and traditions are made. By making the complex simple, Rocket Mortgage created a home buying experience centered around you. So you can turn your dream into reality and your house into home. Rocket Mortgage. Push button. Get mortgage. I'm gonna do Twenty percent off now through Tuesday. NFL Prime Time is back. Prime Time's available Sunday through Wednesday only on ESPN Plus. And LSU shining in prime time tonight, dominating AM. Still a minute 47 to go in the first quarter. 21 0 Tigers. They have 231 yards of offense. Joe Burrow, six out of eight for 159 and two touchdowns. He just does not miss very often. You make a mistake, he makes you pay big time for it. Another touchback off the foot of Avery Atkins. Holly? Well, Joe Burrow is exceptional in many things, but one of the things he is really good at is reading and recognizing the field. Their athletic trainer, Jack Marucci, who's one of the most innovative guys in college football, told us that they actually test Joe Burrow and many of the players with these special goggles. They're doing neurology testing, and they fa found out that his field vision, his read and react ability, and his execution control are in the 90th percentile. He's one of the best on the team, but would you believe it, Thaddeus Moss may be even better but that is some of the new technology and innovation that LSU is doing to track how well their players are doing. Joe Burrow, one of the best. Uh, absolutely. It's hard to find something that he doesn't do exceptionally well. Kellen Mond incomplete for Courtney Davis with Kerry Vincent in coverage. Remember, we talked to Jimbo Fisher, who have been around a lot of terrific quarterbacks, yeah. coached a lot of quarterbacks who got on to the NFL, won a Heisman. And he said, I don't remember the last time I saw a quarterback who's playing as well in every aspect of the game as Joe Burrow. Well, and the stuff that Holly was talking about, when you hear NFL people talk about quarterbacks, one of the things they say is how quickly they can process things. And that's what all that leads to. He is a very quick processor of chaotic situations and seeing what he needs to see quickly and, uh, and capitalizing on it. 
On second and ten, against some pressure, Mon got it off. Davis, the catch, and Damone Clark, the tackle. Well, before the season started, very few people were talking about Joe Burrow in the NFL draft. Todd McShay said maybe not drafted at best, probably a right. day three pick. But now Todd McShay has him as his number one quarterback and second overall behind Chase Young, yeah. the defensive lineman from Ohio State. And he and Tua Tungavailoa are the two quarterbacks expected to go the highest, and both of them are very similar in their ability to process, be quick, and be accurate with the football. Very similar in that regard. Of course, teams are going to have to make a judgment about Tua's health after the hip injury. Mond taken down. Back of the 17. Kayla Vaughn chase on again. Well, this time he's just working one-on-one -on -one against Dan Moore, the left tackle. There's no stunt, but there's a spin move. Watch him come right into the shoulder and then spin back to the inside with quickness and get Kellen Mond on the ground. And a good start for this LSU defense pressuring the Aggie quarterback. Caleb Von Chason has been a great pass rusher in his career. This year, not as much numbers-wise, he's been involved in coverage a lot more, but a very fast start to this one. Braden Mann punts again. The freshman Derek Stingley lets it bounce as it takes a bounce back toward the punter. And LSU will start with excellent field position. At the 45-yard line this season for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Hey, Sean, we were talking in the break a little bit about whether this game has a lot of extra incentive for LSU, and I think it absolutely does. If you listen to Joe Burrow in the press conference after the Arkansas game and they asked him about this, he kind of smirked. And then he gave the politically correct answer. But I think deep down in him and a lot of these guys, this game was very meaningful to them. And they felt like it was taken away from them in many ways. There were some skirmishes after that seven overtime game. One of the wildest the in college of football quarter. history. Fittingly, a completion by Burrow ends the quarter. On to Terrace Marshall. All LSU, end of one. The Tigers up 21 to nothing. Do try to continue its drive toward a national title. Of course, the SEC championship game comes first next weekend against Georgia in Atlanta. 240 yards of offense in the first quarter for the Tigers. Joe Burrow, seven out of nine for 168 passing and two TDs. Here's Ty Davis Price, and he powers ahead to the Texas A&M. 33 yard line. This will be the 23rd play, Todd, for LSU already, in just more than a quarter. They've gotten to third down once. Yeah. One time. And that's what Mike Elko said. We, we need to get them to third and five or plus because that's where we can do some creative things. That's easier said than done with this bunch. Well, you're great on first down as they are for the season entering tonight. 9.6 yards per first down. You're not going to get to third down that often. Burrow on the run on target, but the ball comes out from Terrace Marshall and ruled incomplete. Miles Jones there to help knock it away. You know, again, one of the things, and we can talk about so many different things about Joe Burrow and that he's doing well and has done well all year. I'm just so impressed with how he stays under control when he moves or leaves the pocket and keeps his eyes downfield. And when he decides to run, it's always the right decision and it's effective. But he's always looking to throw first when he when he moves out of the pocket. They bring a blitz. Burrow. Look at that. <laughs> Just the movement in the pocket. He thought he was going to have to leave because there was a safety blitz. And then he realized it's picked up. So he didn't have to go anywhere. So he keeps his eyes downfield. They pick up the blitz. He steps up. He steps back. But his eyes stay downfield. And he dumps it off for the nice completion. To Racy McMath. Really nice 
nice job by Sadiq Charles picking up that pressure from the edge. He missed the last two weeks. Back starting at left tackle. Sat out the last two games. They're at full strength now. This offensive line probably doesn't get enough credit. Ty Davis Price. Looks like he came up just short of the first down on just their second third down play of the night. They're going to try to go for it quickly on fourth down. Davis Price burst free. Gets tripped up inside the 20. Keldrick Carper prevented a much bigger gain. It's 10 yards and another first down for LSU. Outstanding block by Badera Treor, the starter at right tackle and then that tight end. Thaddeus Moss, who's not caught a pass yet tonight, but has been very instrumental in the run game as a blocker. Davis Price again trying to bounce outside and he cannot. Well played by Leon O'Neill up from the secondary, number nine. I want to go back to the point you made about this offensive line because I think that is kind of the forgotten group. You know, the last two weeks they've started new guys at left tackle and right tackle, and they built depth by doing that, but they haven't missed a beat. And James Craig, the offensive line coach, Ed Orgeron was raving about him in our meeting yesterday. Thinks he's done a great job with this group up front. And you can't do anything with the skill people if you don't have those guys. Looks like Coach Craig might be the MVP. Yep. And they have a lot of MVP candidates. Both the playing ranks and on the coaching staff. Davis Price to catch. Tackled along the far side by Devin Morris. And they're inside the 15 yard line. See, when you release five guys in the route, you have to throw hot sometimes. If they bring more guys and you can block, you have to throw hot. That time, Keldrick Carper was coming on a safety blitz unblocked because the back was released free, but Joe Burrow got it out of his hand to the back for the completion. Last week in their route of Arkansas 56 to 20 LSU got to third down only five times in the entire game Burrow on target first and goal on the strike to Justin Jefferson Just nice combination route running that slant again another bunch set A&M substituted late they managed to stop that play Davis Price getting some action here. He's a true freshman from right here in Baton Rouge. And you've got Davis Price from Southern Lab High School. You've got Clyde Edwards Hilaire from Catholic High School, both from here in Baton Rouge. So Jimbo Fisher tell us when he was coaching, he said, there's always defensive linemen, there's always running backs in the state of Louisiana. If you're recruiting here, there's tons of them. And wide receivers as well. Yep. Bill Fisher was the offensive coordinator at LSU for seven seasons under Nick Saban said it was a phenomenal experience and there's a touchdown for Davis Price four possessions and four touchdowns for LSU really nice block by big Ed Ingram Ingram watch him working on Bobby Brown right here this is a massive human being he's blocking he stands him up and just holds him out of the hole and Davis Price runs right inside him for the touchdown. Sixth rushing touchdown of his freshman season for Ty Davis Price. Cade York. It's 28 to nothing. Put that cheer practice to use tonight. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Texas A&M down 28 to nothing here at Death Valley against LSU. LSU has outgained them 285 to 18. Yep. Perfect game for Ed Orgeron's team. They've got the offense what they've had and defense playing lights out so far. Let's get another update after the Avery Atkins touchback. Here's Matt. All right, Sean, one of the great rivalries in college football, Florida, Florida State. Jordan Travis goes over the top. Florida was up at that point. We're now tied at seven apiece on the SEC Network.
You made the point during our commercial break a moment ago. Joe Burrow has more yards rushing yeah. in this game than Texas A&M has total offense as a team. Now 38 to 28. And then needs to get something going desperately here, and it, it's got to come from Kellen Mond, but they got to protect him first. Isaiah Spiller, the head for a couple. Jamon Osmond, a big game last week, nine catches for 96 yards and a touchdown in the loss in Athens to Georgia, but he's a guy that they need to kind of get going here in the football game. They have two completions, both have gone to Courtney Davis. Everybody we talked to with Texas A&M last night, players and coaches felt like perhaps they found something in the second half last week at Georgia, and they made a game of it against the Dogs. But whatever they found was lost somewhere on the trip here to Baton Rouge. Jalen Weidermeyer taken down at the 31. It'll be third down and four. Good thing for LSU defensively. One of their best players back has battled an ankle injury most of the year. Grant Delpit. One of the best safeties when he's healthy in all of college football has had to battle through a lot of stuff this year. Did not play last week, took the week off, off to a pretty good start tonight so far. They move him around a lot. He plays all over. He's up in the box this time on the slot. He'll play deep safety. Very active guy in this defense. They come after Mon. He's in full retreat and just throws it away. Incomplete. Well, Marcel Brooks, here he is, number nine, just going to come off the edge, just a speed rusher. And this guy is one of the fastest guys on the team. Actually, Kellen Mon kind of took himself into that pressure. The right tackle didn't know where his quarterback was going to be. And Brooks was able to just kind of corral him. If Kellen Mond stays inside of that block, he's not going to get flushed. I say that because my dad was an offensive line coach, and he says, don't always blame the offensive line. Sometimes the quarterback doesn't help his <laughs> offensive lineman out either. There's Braden Mann, averaging 49.3 on his three punts tonight. His career wow. average is 49.2 in two seasons as the AM punter, Derek Stingley, fair catch, 15 yard line, 54 yard kick. Well, we talked about Joe Burrow and his movement and how smart he is when he does move. Eyes always stay downfield. He's looking to throw when he gets forced out of the pocket, but he doesn't panic. We've seen him make a couple throws. And then when it's the decision is the right one to run, he's got a lot of green grass. This was his longest run of the game. And again, over 35 yards, 38 yards rushing more than AM has offensively. He's just excellent in his decision making, 28 yards, I should say, as a rusher tonight. AM has 24 yards as a team. Look out, he got hit just as he wound up to throw it, and it's a sack for Justin Matabike. We talked about Matabike. He's a handful because of his quickness. And that time Joe Burrow was stepping up in the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield. And he stepped right into the sack. Matabike working on Adrian McGee, the left guard, and just beat him to the inside with his quickness. You know, AM had six sacks on Joe Burrow last year in that six in that seven overtime game. He'll take some sacks. He doesn't put the ball in harm's way, throwing it downfield. It's the first AM sack tonight. They're not a big sack team. They're 22nd for the season. They're 10th in sacks in the SEC. Deep throw by Burrow. Incomplete. Excellent coverage that time by Miles Jones. Miles Jones is a six foot three corner. He's got great length. And he was step for step with the receiver that time and used that long arm to just kind of reach back and knock the football away. It's intended for Stephen Sullivan with the big lead here. They're going a little deeper down the depth chart. They had a couple of tight end split out wide in Sullivan and Jamal Pettigrew. Sullivan one of their seniors playing in his final home game here. He's already graduated in interdisciplinary studies. I've never understood what that is. 
One of these weeks, we'll actually ask somebody who's studying that to tell us what it is. But that would require more inner. Just a lot of talent on this LSU team, and a lot of the players being recognized as finalists for some of the biggest awards in college football. Grant Delpit, finalist for the Jim Thorpe Award, is the best defensive back. Jamar Chase for the Bolitnikoff Award is the best wide receiver, and Joe Burrow is going to have a busy month in December. Yes, finalist for the Maxwell Award is the Player of the Year and the Davy O'Brien Award. For the best quarterback, of course, the Home Depot College Football Awards Ceremony comes your way Thursday, December 12th at 7 Eastern on ESPN with a red carpet special at 6 on ESPNU. Already up 28-0. Burrow fires on target. Jamar Chase tackled from behind by Miles Jones out of the 36. They convert on third and long with a 25-yarder. Well, A&M tried to rush three and drop eight to no avail. Joe Burrow just waited, and he waited for Chase to come into that deep dig route, and they got it for the first down. Burrow. Finally heaves it to the near sideline, almost completed it. It looked like a throw away, but Stephen Sullivan, Stephon Sullivan tried to uh, rescue it along the near sideline. You know, I'm thinking they're might going to call a blindside block on Austin Deculus as Burrow was moving around in the pocket. He kind of peeled back and put a block on Tyree Johnson. I don't know if that's going to be it or not. I thought it was a little iffy, though. There are two fouls against Texas A&M. Yep, that was wrong. Illegal substitution, Texas A&M. That penalty is declined. Roughing the passer, number 92 on the defense, blow to the head, 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, Jaden Peavy is the guy. Again, Joe Burrow is running all over the place. Those big defensive linemen. He didn't Ooh. knock him down, but he hit him in the head. I think that was his forearm that hit him in the head. You just can't go up that high and hit the quarterback there. So good call. Doesn't it look like that guy is offside right there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Edwards E. Lair. Nice cut back to the inside. Read the block beautifully. Gets banged out of bounds. Very close to another first down. Yeah, I think he's the secret weapon of this team. I mean, Burrow's great. The wide receivers are NFL caliber. Moss is a talented tight end. This guy's the secret weapon because he has an NFL skill set playing in college football. Runner, receiver, blocker, does it all. And he picks up the first down. Clyde Edwards E. Lair, we talk about awards he is one of the four finalists for the Paul Horning Award the most versatile player in college football you mentioned he was one of the ten semifinalists for the Doak Walker Award as the best running back in the country gone over a thousand yards rushing for the year 13th player in LSU history to rush for a thousand in a season as teams have gone to more zone defense against this passing game he's become more of a weapon he only had 12 catches the first seven games but he had 27 catches in the last four games coming into tonight. Very much more involved in the pass game. Edwards E. Lair ducks down at the 32. Well, Todd, you talked about the improvement of Clyde Edwards E. Lair's hands. There's a good reason. He can take a, park, a car and build it back with those hands. But more importantly, he took his running back coach, Tommy Robinson, frog hunting. He goes often. He knows how to catch the frog where you keep your hands open. The frog jumps in and you quickly close it. So this is a guy, when you talk about versatility, I bet you didn't know he can put a car together and he can also catch a frog. Now, those are some well, versatile hands. Now, I've been frog hunting but I went with a gig where you gig the frog I never tried to grab a frog that's pretty skillful dig him a deep throw out of the back of the end zone incomplete now for those who don't know what's a gig and why were you frog hunting a gig is kind of like a spear that you you shine a light on the bank and the frog is blinded and you just come up on the boat and you you gig him then you throw him in the back but it sounds like Clyde does it a little bit more uh, challenging way of just reaching out and grabbing but you eat them frog legs they're mm -hmm. good okay you're yeah. just not out there to no, you, you get them to eat frogs all no. over the country no thank goodness third down at eight all of a sudden some third down plays for LSU 
Burrow for the end zone intended for Jamar Chase. They're beyond Renfro in coverage. Oh, we saw good physical corner play by Miles Jones. This is Renfro on the other side. Stride for stride with Chase. Some, some hand fighting. They're allowing both guys to push. And Burrow not able to drop it in the bucket. And when you got a corner who's 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 and long, you, you've got to throw the ball over them to get to your receiver, and that's pretty tough to do. There's Cade York. He had a very nice freshman season. He's from McKinney, Texas. 16 out of 19 in field goals. He's made his last three, nine of his last 10. This is from 51. And that is good. Just a yard shy of his career long. He made a 52 yarder at Ole Miss. Being student sections, passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Some might call it Live Mass. Fortunately, we have not. The LSU Tigers student section is already on the national watch list, of course. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Get the committee's attention by using hashtag LiveMa student section contest. Breezy night, so Avery Atkins will use a holder for this kickoff. Boy, does he have a big leg. 31-0 LSU here back in the studio, Matt Perry. Gentlemen, there will be bedlam in Stillwater. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Jalen Hurts absolutely embarrasses this Oklahoma State defender on his way to the touchdown. Suiters on their opening drive go ahead 7 0. Pokes come right back. Chuba Hubbard, three yards out. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. We are tied at seven apiece. Yes, it will be bedlam. One thing we are feeling fairly confident about here tonight, we're not looking at another seven overtime game between these two teams as they played last year. Nice catch by Ryan Rennick for a very short gain, one of their tight ends with just his third catch of his junior season. You, know, you mentioned it earlier, Sean, that these Texas A&M players and coaches felt like in the second half last week, something clicked. They took it to a different level, and offensively, they threw the ball well. They still only had 274 yards for the game, but they outgained Georgia. But it's been even tougher sledding tonight here in Baton Rouge against this LSU defense. Only 26 total yards. And we're nearing halftime. 26 yards on 19 plays for Texas A&M. Kellen Mond on target should be a first down. No, it's an incomplete pass. Davis apparently did not corral it. He welcomed the ball in beyond the line to make, but did not possess it. Kerry Vincent in coverage, third down and eight. We talked to Dave Aranda yesterday. He really felt like his team was going to play good tonight defensively. Really felt like they've corrected some of the mistakes the last couple weeks. Felt like they matched up well against this offense, and they have played outstanding defense so far tonight. Been able to pressure Kellen Mond on these third down plays. Moving along the line, a lot of finger pointing. False start. Up the offense. Number 77, five yard penalty, third down. Brian McCollum, who's in at right guard. Not a starter, but he has started in the past. He's played center and guard. Junior from Spring, Texas. Fourth penalty against AM. Right now, LSU just has one big body. They only have one defensive lineman. That's right there, Richard Lawrence. They've got linebacker type pass rushers surrounding him on this third down and long. Kellen Mond, four for 10 passing for 21 yards. And dumped again by DeMond. Clark again Jacoby Stevens draws a block then he goes out here's Damone Clark he's a linebacker not a defensive lineman so it's quickness shooting into the gap beating that right guard to the quarterback and two plays in a row Ryan McCollum hurt his offense with the penalty and then giving up the sack and A&M has to punt the football again 
Derek Stingley, the freshman back for Braden Mann's punt. That wasn't Mann's best effort. They're going to mark it just across midfield at the 49. So when we come back, Joe Burrow on this next drive could set SEC records in a single season for passing yards and touchdown passes. It's in a season of 42-75 and one more touchdown pass and he'll match Drew Locke's 44 touchdown passes for Missouri in 2017 and tie that SEC record. Unbelievable year. Was a 58% passer last year and had a good year. This year it's just through the roof. Terrace Marshall, nice run after the catch. Burrow knew he was going to get hit on the throw, still delivered. And Joe's parents, Jim and Robin Burrow, are here again tonight. Jimmy retired from coaching, longtime defense coordinator, at Ohio U for Frank Solich, in part so. He and Robin can enjoy their son's last season of college football. Picked a good time to do it, that's for sure. And they have had a blast. And Joe has loved having them around. They've all talked about how warmly they've been received by the great Tiger fans. You know, Joe said he's actually happiest for his mom because his mom was coming to all the games last year anyway. But now that her, the fact that that Jimmy can be there with her and they can experience as a whole family this special season. Uh, those are just moments and experiences you do not get back. And uh, I'm very happy for that whole family. Dad, Jimmy played at Nebraska. Joe had two brothers wanted to play at Nebraska. You might have read the Sports Illustrated article with Joe on the cover this week. Talked about how it was always his dream to play at Nebraska. Edwards Elair swings out wide. And Burrow could not escape that time. DeMarvin Leal ran him down. Yeah, it was Matabike again, first of all, that forced him out. And again, Joe's not going to throw one up for grabs. You know, Sean, I really identify with this whole story with Joe Burrow because my senior year, my dad was coaching for the Pittsburgh Steelers, an offensive line coach, and he wasn't going to get to see me play. And the NFL went on strike. And Chuck Knoll, the head coach in the Rooney family, they assigned all the assistant coaches places to go scout regions of the country. And they just gave my dad one team. They gave him Penn State. <laughs> and my dad great. got to come and watch me about the first nine games of the season. And then, of course, the NFL went back to playing. He missed the Sugar Bowl. But just even those games, he got to be there with my mom and with my family. It was very, very special for him, for my family, and for me. On the offense, number nine, five-yard penalty, third down. Oh. Typical class from the uh, Rooney family. Yes, absolutely. Which has been one of their trademarks for the very long time that they've owned the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we talked to Joe Burrow uh, the other day about the Sports Illustrated cover, and he said, "Yeah, it was really cool. I was yeah. one of those kids who uh, was growing up had a subscription to Sports Illustrated, and you were on the cover of <laughs> Sports Illustrated back yeah. when you played many, many years ago. And I didn't play as well in my game right after the Sports Illustrated cover as Joe's playing today. So he's got. Uh, they talk about that Sports Illustrated jinx." Not really affecting Joe so far tonight. Joe in trouble again. Swarmed under Bobby Brown first there. And you told Joe Burrow that you still get maybe a couple times a week people who'll send yeah. you that cover and ask you to sign it. People collect them. I mean, it's it's a big deal for a lot of people, and uh, you know it's still kind of fun to to do. My my boys are shocked that it still happens, but it does. You know, I mentioned the article he wanted to go to Nebraska. And the, Burrow did when he was transferring out of Ohio State. Apparently, you know, the article said basically Nebraska didn't have any interest. But I talked to some folks there the other day. You know, they had already just signed Adrian Martinez, and they had promised him that they weren't going to bring in another quarterback. They thought he was a very good fit yeah. to their system. So there's a little bit more to the story there than got told. Fair catch made by Anias Smith off the punt by Zach von Rosenberg, and here's Matt Berry. Sean, coming up on the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report, another classic finish between Auburn and Alabama in the Iron Bowl, plus Wisconsin is headed to the Big Ten Championship. And Utah battling for a playoff spot is in a fight tonight with Colorado. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, join me coming up on the Mercedes-Benz Halftime Report. All right, Matt, thank you.
I should hasten to add, I think if Scott Frost and the folks in Nebraska knew Joe yeah, Burrow was right. going to be this good, yeah. they, might they might have, have changed their system to heart to heart <laughs> with Adrian Martinez. Yeah. But, you know, again, that's part of the crazy thing. I don't think anybody knew. I mean, he was at Ohio State for two years. He thought he was going to be the starter. He got hurt. He ended up not being the starter. Of course, they had a good quarterback in front of him in Dwayne Haskins. But, you know, he had only thrown as a backup in mop-up duty about 45 passes when he was there for two years. But he knew what he was capable of. And uh, when he got in the right system and made this decision, I mean, it has been a great place and a great fit for him. Mond to Spiller on first down for three. Now Kellen Mond takes off up the middle. Good decision. He gets helicoptered around by Kerry Vincent, but it's a first down for AM out at the 38 yard line. Now, the one thing that you cannot ever doubt about Kellen Mond is he is a tough, tough dude. He has taken a lot of hits this year, throws his body around. He's a big kid, 6'3, 217 pounds, but he's pretty fearless too. They bring pressure at him after the 18-yard run. It's batted out of the air by Christian Fulton, one of the LSU cornerbacks. Christian Fulton is playing with so much more confidence at this point in the year. He had a rough night against Texas, and Dave Miranda said he was a kind of a sensitive guy, and it really kind of went in the tank a little bit. He was really bummed out about how he played in that Texas game. But he's come out of it, he's bounced back, and he's playing with a lot more confidence. He has elite quickness and anticipation, and now he's got his confidence back as well. Another of the 14 seniors honored before the game, playing in their final home game, and going out with a bang as we approach halftime. Mond under pressure, just heaved it up. Hendrick Rogers hoping for a flag. Derek Stingley had the coverage. See, see, this is the thing about Kellen Mond. This has been what's happened to him all season. He's going to leave the pocket. We've seen Joe Burrow leave the pocket. We saw the penalty in the first time he left the pocket. But these are the kind of hits that Kellen Mond has taken all year. Gets rid of the ball, hit on the ground, and those, they take their toll. They take their toll on you in a game and over the course of a season as well. Well, they lost Eric McCoy, their center, to the NFL. He was a second-round pick of the Saints, having an excellent rookie year. And that was a big loss from the offensive line of a year ago. This offensive line is not as good for AM. Mond almost intercepted as Grant Delpit stepped in front of the receiver, Jalen Weidermeyer, and almost picked it off. The right guard, Kenyon Green, just got run over. And that's why Kellen Mond was not able to get much on the play. Watch right here. I think that's Rashard Lawrence just pushes the right guard right back into the lap of the quarterback, and that's why he wasn't very accurate with the throw. Big bull rush by number 90, and that ball almost intercepted. The sixth punt of the half for Braden Mann. Utter domination. I mean, LSU has not had a half of football, I don't know, especially against a high level or a conference opponent. This, this might be the best half of football that they've played both sides of the ball and the punt takes us to the half 324 yards for LSU 40 That's for Texas A&M 31 nothing Tigers let's send you to the studio time now for the Mercedes-Benz halftime report College football primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton all Tigers leading Texas A&M 31 to nothing as we go to the second half here in Baton Rouge with Avery Atkins kicking off. And it's another touchback. And we welcome you back to Death Valley. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us. We talked during the first half. Undoubtedly, the college football playoff ranking committee moved Ohio State ahead of LSU last week because the LSU defense yeah. hasn't been all that great. They've been great tonight. Absolutely. First 30 minutes, I don't know that Dave Aranda, Ed Orgeron could ask for anything more. Held AM to 40 yards of total offense. Made life miserable for Kellen Mond. I mean, he was 5 of 14. They sacked him three times. Consistent pressure. Now the question, can they put another 30-minute performance like that on top of this to change the perception of this LSU defense a little bit? Kellen Mond dropped for a two-yard loss. AM now with 38 yards of offense. Richard Lawrence got there for LSU. I think that one was a called quarterback draw 
that there was nowhere to go for Mond. Mm -hmm. Spillers was leading as a blocker, and Mond was going to run that football, but there was no running room, and it looked like a sack, but it was really a running play by Kellen Mond. Second and 12, Kellen Mond just five out of 14. 24 yards passing in the first half. He throws on the run, incomplete. Trying to get it to Courtney Davis. Flag down back behind the line of scrimmage. And yeah, the area you would expect holding on AM. Unless you played zone that time. Holding on the offense, number 65. That penalty is declined. Third down. Third down. Marcel Brooks is uh, a very fast athletic edge rusher. He's a true freshman. They just kind of say he's a guy they just got to kind of line up and put in the right direction and say go. And he can do that. He can really go. And he drew the penalty on Dan Moore, the left tackle on that play. Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator for LSU, told us Brooks is legit 4 4 speed. Very talented, true freshman from Fort Worth. Third down and 12. Mon steps into the throw way too high. Looking for Kendrick Rogers, who is looking for a flag, and there is a flag down near midfield. Christian Fulton in coverage for LSU. Pass interference on the defense, number one, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Not sure Rodgers was going to get to this throw. Again, pretty decent pressure by LSU, but Fulton did make contact, grabbed on him, and AM with a break there. You know, AM only ran three plays in that first half on the LSU side of the 50, and the furthest they got was the 46 yard line. They got sacked for a 10 yard loss when they reached the LSU 47. First and 10. The Aggies at their own 39 yard line. Even a simple pass required a difficult catch by Isaiah Spiller. Derek Stingley there to force him out of bounds. And that's, that's a bad pass by Kellen Mond because when you're throwing to a running back out of the backfield, you don't want to make him work extra. You want him to catch it so he can turn up field quickly and do what he does best. That's run with the ball in his hands. When he has to stop or reach back or do anything, jump and slow down, that really is, is difficult for a running back. After the loss of two, Look out, Mon got whacked by Patrick Green, a queen, and threw it out of bounds. They are coming after him. See, Patrick Queen is the spy on this play. They know Kellen Mon might run. He's right here. He's not going to blitz. He's going to spy Kellen Mon. Eyes on the quarterback, and as soon as Kellen Mon leaves the pocket, he attacks. But he waited until he had a clean shot at him from that middle position. This defense is swarming tonight. It's just, they're everywhere. And, and I think they're tired of hearing that they're yeah. the weakness of the team. I mean, for so many years, it was the other way around here right. at LSU. Exactly. The defense carried the offense. I do think the seven overtime game has a lot to do with the motivation level here tonight. There's the best throw of the night by Mond, but Kendrick Rogers couldn't hang on with Christian Fulton in coverage. They'll punt on fourth and 12. Holly? Well, obviously, Texas A&M is down so big. Jimbo Fisher told his team in the locker room at the half, we're going to find out who we are right now. All the things we're trying to preach to you, all the things they're trying to change from a culture standpoint here, we're going to find out. He said, I don't want you to look at the scoreboard. Quit worrying about what the score is. Just execute on every play. If we can control what we can control, we may just get back in this thing. Yeah, this is not finding that final 2% like they were looking for right. last week. This is the first 10%. That's what they're looking for in this game. Go compete. No fair catch here by Derek Stingley. 
And he returns it across the 20, 52 yard punt and a 10 yard return. Ryan Rennick made the tackle. Well, we talked about last year's game seven overtimes. LSU thought they won it in regulation after an interception, but Kellen Mond's knee was ruled down. So the Gatorade bath was premature, and then LSU thought they had won it again. But after that spike by Kellen Mond, they put one second back on the clock. He threw a touchdown pass of 19 yards, Courtney Davis, to force seven overtimes, yeah. as it turned out. The game was 31-31 in regulation. Personal foul, legal block out of bounds, number 31 on the receiving team. That was during the kick. The penalty being forced from the end of the kick. First down. Yeah, Ed Ogeron told us earlier this week when we visited, he still has not gotten over that game yeah. last year. He, he said, you know, we still didn't play well enough to win, but I don't think they should have put one second back on the clock. Yeah. That was the biggest complaint that he had. Mon's knee was clearly down on that first time when they gave him the Gatorade bath. But there was uh, oh, there were a lot of unpleasantries exchanged <laughs> after that game, which is putting it mildly. And as Holly said earlier, the LSU players have talked about how they've used that game as motivation, particularly in their conditioning. All season long since the offseason in particular. Terrace Marshall ahead for about 11. Now again, even on your own six yard line, it's five man protection. And Joe Burrow getting rid of the football. Now 20 yards away from setting the single season passing yardage record held by Tim Couch. Might this be it? Diving catch, incomplete pass. Intended for Terrace Marshall. And Miles Jones is down. I wonder if it's a cramp with the way he is flexing his leg. Timeout, 12.42 to go, third quarter, 31 zip, LSU. They have enjoyed this one from the start. LSU scored touchdowns, its first four possession. A field goal on their fifth. And an offside penalty here. Yeah, Matabike. Offside on the defense, number 52. Five yard penalty, second down. Very quick off the ball that time, too quick. And uh, instead of second and 10 now, Joe Burrow has second and five. So uh, a bad penalty. You know, last week they really hurt themselves with false start penalties on offense in the crowd noise at Georgia. Really. Went with a couple situations where they had third and one, put him at third and six, third and five, put him at third and ten. This penalty on the defense helps out LSU quite a bit. Burrow completes it. Jamar Chase out to the 36-yard line. So that's 13. More passing yards for Joe Burrow, and now he's seven away from the single season SEC record. Again, single coverage. The safety went with Clyde Edwards Hilaire. That opened up the slant, and Joe Burrow read it. The check down. Edwards Hilaire runs out of bounds, and that looks like the record it is. And Joe Burrow now holds the SEC record for most passing yards in a single season 42 79 that's four more than Tim Couch had for Kentucky back in 1998 what a season that I think is now Todd almost certainly going to end with the Heisman Trophy not end with it but the Heisman Trophy will be a part of it Edward Z. Lear across midfield, slapped down by Charles Oliver. You no, know, there was a little extracurricular at the end of that play between Jaden Peavy of AM and Adrian McGee of LSU. And the referees just kind of let it go. They they stepped in, they didn't make a big deal of it. I, I like seeing that. It was just, you know, they didn't need to get a penalty. Just get them cleared out of it and go back and play football. A very well officiated game by this SEC crew led by Matt Leffler. Four man rush. Burrow steps away from DeMarvin Leal, who's still in hot pursuit. There's a block 
And Burrow is spin move and he's out of bounds with another first down. Now a flag thrown very late. I wonder if that's for a blindside yeah. block. I think it's going to be. It's a, it's a new rule this year, a new point of emphasis. And you're going to see it on plays like you see that on misdirection plays or when the quarterback First leaves the foul, pocket. Blindside block, number 76 on the offense. It, it's hard. Spot foul, correction. Spot foul, 15 yards. Replay, second, first down. It's, it's totally a player safety rule, but it's a hard thing to get guys to not do. You know, that one, he was kind of along the side of him. And I know that's the point of the rule and the emphasis of the rule is for player safety. But, you know, when you're a big offensive lineman running down the Correction field. Correction will replay first down. The penalty being forced from the previous spot. It's, it's hard to get those guys to peel off or just stop and stand in front of them. That's what they're Second trying down. to get done. That one was on the side more than it was a, a blindside. Well, he looked at the first replay, he used the expression blindsided. To me, it looks like Leal's looking right at him. He knows he's there. Then he lowers his yeah. shoulder into the contact. Yeah, Leal actually leaned into the lineman. Yeah, I understand the intent of the rule. I don't think that's a good application of it. You mentioned the backup offensive tackles. Deculus was the starter. Didn't start the last two weeks. Back out there kind of splitting time with Badera Treor at right tackle. So they're at full strength this week. Justin Jefferson couldn't squeeze it. As soon as you say what a well-officiated game it's been, <laughs> here comes the call that invariably you're going to disagree with. By the way, I'm a little bit worried about Joe Burrow's completion percentage now. He's just 16 for 23 tonight. Pedestrian. The Completion percentage for him still 78.3, comfortably ahead of the single season FBS record. Colt McCoy at Texas 76-7 in 2008. Joe has been over 75% passing in each of the last five games. Edwards Elair couldn't break free, dumped at the 35-yard line. Really good defensive possession by AM. Might have been their best of the game. Got some negative plays, got the penalty. Good open field tackling and forcing a punt from the Tigers. Joe's not the only one who's made history tonight for LSU. Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson now have 2,503 combined receiving yards. That's a single season LSU record for a duo. Passing the 24-94 for Josh Reed and Michael Clayton in 2001. That was the year Reed won the Belitnikoff Award as the best receiver in the country. Zach von Rosenberg, the punt, the fair catch made by Anaya Smith. Next Sunday, it is the day so many college football fans are looking forward to the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups. The semifinals will be at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl and the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl on Saturday, December 28th. Reese and the gentlemen will also unveil the New Year's Six Bowl matchups. They'll have the final top 25 rankings in a four-hour special. Starting at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. That is on ESPN and the ESPN app. Here's an interception by Grant Delpit, bringing it back down the sideline. Flags are thrown. Delpit got flattened by Carson Green, the right tackle. But if it stands, it's the eighth career interception for Grant Delpit in the second of his junior year, a 27-yard return. When we talked about they move Delpit around, they'll play him in the box, they'll play him in the slot, they'll rush him. This time he was the deep middle safety, and he just read the eyes of Kellen Mock. Here he is right here. He's going to play the deep middle and watch him just lock eyes on the quarterback, the Kellen Mock. The field is an interception. Not a very well-thrown ball by Kellen Mond. Just kind of threw it in the middle of the defense. And Grant Delpit right there was his knee down. Is that where they marked the football? Ooh. I think he kind of kept it off the ground. I don't know. They're taking a look at it. Nice play by Delpit, who missed last week with the ankle injury. Yeah. Left, knee. left, yep, knee, went left down. knee went down. Yep. You know, Sean, you were talking about the selection show and there'll be great anticipation that i mentioned next sunday at yes. noon eastern 
And we talked about this all in our meeting. We talked about it last night. You know, does LSU have a chance to jump back to number one? Well, we watched Ohio State at noon today, and they were awesome uh, in Ann Arbor. However, however, Karma. now they're going to play a Wisconsin team that they beat badly already this year in the Big Ten Championship game. And LSU is going to play number four, Georgia. But the player was down at the 40-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 928. 28, please. And we talked about LSU getting jumped in the rankings this week by Ohio State. After LSU had done the same thing to Ohio State a couple of weeks ago. I think there were two reasons why. I think you agree with this. Number one, the committee thinks, at least prior to today, Ohio State's clearly the better defensive right. More team complete team, yes. And I don't think LSU, uh, I don't think Ohio State had the signature wins that LSU had. LSU right. had four wins against teams that were in the top 10 in the country when they played them. Right. Some of those don't look quite as good, particularly the Texas win now that they've fallen out of the top 25. And I think the committee was waiting for Ohio State to have a really good win I agree. as they got last week against Penn State. Yep. I agree. However, LSU will have a better opportunity next week in the SEC championship game against a highly regarded and top four Georgia team. Well, and let's not even wait that long as Edward Z. Lear runs for another first down Keldrick Carpenter made the tackle if you're the committee you said okay our concern was the LSU defense right they're pitching a shutout against the seven win team in the SEC they're being dominant yeah Ohio State was great today they beat Michigan but if the defensive concerns are put to rest I go back to LSU has the better resume yeah they have more impressive quality wins you love stop rate. Can I do. Explain yeah. stop rate. Stop rate is a defensive metric that just measures how many times you end a possession defensively with a turnover or a turnover on downs or a kick, a punt. You get a stop. And you look at Ohio State, Clemson, and Georgia, the 1, 2, 3 in stop rate. LSU at 23 is not that terrible, but just not the same. But tonight playing at a different level defensively. Low snap to Burrow, and that threw the whole playoff, and he got dropped by Devin Morris, who was coming on a blitz anyway. And we talk about the resumes, but Texas out of the top 25, LSU now just three yeah. wins against teams that are in the college football top 25. Now, Ohio State actually has four, so that you could make the argument right. Ohio State has the better resume. Well, I don't know when you... Win at Texas. You beat Florida, Auburn, and Alabama. I mean, they've beaten everybody. LSU has scored at least 42 points in every game this year, except Auburn. And of course, not yet there tonight with 31. Their offense got a little stagnant tonight after the big start. Burrow, what a play! And the catch was not made by Thaddeus Moss. There is a flag down. I think it's going to be holding on LSU. It was still a, um, another wonderful effort by Joe Burrow moving out of the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, trying to get the ball to Thaddeus Moss. Holding, holding. On the offense, number 77. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. You know, at the end of the first half, after not being able to slow down this offense at all, and then here in the third quarter, Mike Elko's defense, a little more consistent pressure on Joe Burrow. They're taking some chances. They're bringing some extra bodies. And they've made the quarterback, Joe Burrow, more uncomfortable than he was at any point in the first quarter and a half of the football game. Cade York to try another long field goal. This will be a 50-yarder. He made a 51-yarder in the second quarter. And Buddy Johnson, the leading tackle for him, told us yesterday that Mike Elko, the defense coordinator, is super intelligent. He said he makes amazing halftime adjustments, so maybe he made some that have paid off tonight. Another good night for the freshman kicker, Cade York. Couple tonight made from 50 plus, and it's 34 to nothing. Cheerleaders great as well. Yes. It's a special place. I it mean, really is. is. I have not been a game here in many years, and this oh. is as great a venue as there is in yes. college football. Certainly as loud. Especially when you get an undefeated football team. <laughs> Another touchback for Avery Atkins. 
Kick off your week 13 NFL Sunday with ESPN and ESPN app at 10 a.m. Eastern. All the early breaking stories, previews of each game right up to kickoff, and then cap off week 13. The NFL's 50th season of Monday Night Football on ESPN with another good matchup. Also on Deportes and the ESPN app. The 8 and 3 Minnesota Vikings and the 9 and 2 Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson in the race for the MVP, certainly in the NFL. Right now, the best odds in Vegas for Lamar Jackson. No doubt. But Russell Wilson not far behind. Isaiah Spiller trying to find some running room. And he gets six on first down. On the LSU side, Marcus Allen on the left. There's no way he's 59 years old. <laughs> and John Robinson. The Hall of Fame coach at USC who is now a consultant yeah. to Ed Ogeron here at LSU. Yeah, it's really a neat story. I mean, they, they met when Coach O was the interim coach at USC because he had to go speak to booster club meetings on Mondays and he would ride back and forth with Coach Robinson and they developed a nice friendship. Finished the story after this play. And Isaiah Spiller swung down by Patrick Queen short of the first down. John Robinson's wife Beverly is from New Orleans and went to LSU and a little while ago he called Coach O and said you know I, my wife wants to move back to this part of the country and we're thinking about moving to New Orleans and, and Ed said well coach if you move to Baton Rouge I'll make a place for you on my staff and that's what he did and he's on the staff he goes into the office every day I talked to him on the field before the game I said do you still watch film he says oh yeah I watch a ton of film I just can't remember as well the next day <laughs> what I saw but I still watch and give my two cents worth well he said Marcus looks great for 59 and he does and John Robinson looks pretty darn good for 84 as well Isaiah Spiller with the biggest play of the night for the Aggies and their deepest penetration as he goes out of bounds at the LSU 21 with a gain of 46. Yeah, nice concept. They brought crossing routes and released the back out of the backfield. Here's Spiller, and as he leaves, none of these linebackers are going to pick him up. They get caught up on the crossing routes. Nobody goes with the back. It looks like Jacoby Stevens, number three, might have been responsible in coverage, but was way out of position. And the deepest penetration now for the Aggie offense. Low throw, Jamon Osmond the catch, and their leading receiver has his first catch of the night, good for six yards. John Robinson thought had a great compliment of Ed Ogeron. He said, he reminds me of John Madden. John Robinson first met John Madden when he was in the third grade. He's known him, they're very close the whole life. He said, a lot of people underestimate John Madden when they first meet him. Yeah. They don't realize how intelligent he is till they spend more time around him. Both have a great way with people. Coach Robinson says a lot of appreciation for the way Ogeron runs a team. Tough run by Spiller, almost got them to the end zone. And John said uh, he told the USC people he thought they should have given Ed Ogeron. Yeah. The head coaching job after he was six and two as the interim coach there in 2013. Ed was very disappointed he didn't get it. He was trying to call a timeout there, as you saw. The question is, did he get it? I think he did. I, I think he did get the timeout. Illegal substitution on the defense, 12 in the formation, half the distance, first down. <laughs> well, maybe that's why he was trying to call the timeout. Mm -hmm. Knew he had too many guys out there. You know, this defense that has been so on point for the whole game, they get confused on the the back going out of the backfield. They give up an explosive play, the first one of the game, and now being threatened to give up a touchdown here. The first and goal from inside the one. Kagan Baldry, the fullback, former offensive lineman, leads the way for Isaiah Spiller. And an AM touchdown, their first score of the game. 
with 4.13 to go in the third. Well, you mentioned Baldry, great lead block on this play. This is just power football. Watch 43 lead right up in here. And Spiller, who's a big back himself, at 220 pounds, just gets right on his hip, follows him into the end zone. So a good scoring drive, the first of the night for Texas A&M. In the first eight possessions, a combined 35 yards of offense for the Aggies. They went 75 yards for their first score of the night. Seth Small added the extra point. 34-7 LSU in Baton Rouge. Championship drive, game of the week. LSU trying to complete an undefeated, untied regular season. Of course, you can't be tied anymore. Found right, out right the hard way at yeah. College Station last year <laughs> when these two teams played seven overtimes. John Stinchcomb was the analyst for that game. I wonder if he went into different impersonations during each overtime period. He's one of the best. He does a great imitation of you. Yeah. Clyde Edwards Elair on the kickoff return and good coverage by the Aggies. They stop him at the 15. Here's Matt Berry. Time now, guys. TNT best performance. We check in on North Carolina, North Carolina State. Sam Howell to Devontae Williams for the touchdown. North Carolina has just scored, trying to become bowl eligible for the first time since 2016. First year under Mac Brown yeah. of Stim 2 for him as the head coach of the Tar Heels. Should correct myself. That was Matt Stim's going brother John Matt was the analyst I'll clear that up so he doesn't hammer me with the impersonation next year at the seminar <laughs> Justin Jefferson gets just more than 10 and a first down taken across the sideline by Charles Oliver well Joe Burrow still in there with a 27 point lead and under four minutes to go I think had AM not scored on the last possession maybe he would have gotten the hook and of course there is still one big record Try to achieve tonight. There's 43 touchdown passes. One more to tie Drew Lock for the SEC single season record. Jamar Chase staggers across the 45 yard line to the 46, a pickup of 20. Great job of just sidestepping Buddy Johnson. Buddy Johnson was blitzing, he was spying the quarterback, had a clean shot, and Joe Burrow just stopped, froze Johnson for a minute, and was able to get rid of the football to the crossing route. Very has excellent pocket presence. I mean, he just, nothing flusters him. Even when he gives up a sack, I mean, he just comes back the next play. One more completion for Burrow would be 20 in the game. That would be 15 straight games with 20 completions. There it is. And it's a big one. Clyde Edwards, he layer inside the 30. See, this is a mismatch. This is Clyde Edwards Hilaire against Anthony Hines, a linebacker. There's no linebacker in the SEC, maybe in the country, that's going to cover him coming out of the backfield. It's a little option route. He puts his foot in the ground and breaks back inside, and that's a mismatch for this LSU offense. Edwards Hilaire stop. You know, we mentioned 15 straight games now with 20 completions or yeah. more. The school record that he broke was set by Tommy Hodson in 1987. He had three straight games of 20 yeah, completions. Right. So he pretty well shattered that record. It's the longest active such streak in the country. Uh, again, this is this is just such a different LSU offense. They've always been a heavy max protection. They've had great wideouts that they said, you just go beat coverage. Now they manipulate coverage with five-man routes. Nice catch by Edwards Elair. We talked to Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator, last night. He said, you really need to take away the throws to Edwards Elair. And Burrow and Clyde are starting to find a little rhythm there. That's two in a row. They get him matched up on the linebacker, Anthony Hines. And, and again, he's too hard to cover. He's quick, he's elusive, and he catches everything thrown his way. He has four catches for 49 yards. Burrow. Throws wow. and it should have been intercepted trying to jam it into Thaddeus Moss and Leon O'Neill got in the way Yeah, Leon O'Neill made a really nice play on the football Sophomore safety out of Cypress, Texas. He's gonna undercut this route Comes in front of Moss. Moss gets a little tangled up and loses his 
footwork a little bit out. I see why. And Leon no, Leo grabbed him by behind and kind of stopped his movement and then shot in front of him to get the football. That could have been flagged. Yeah. And usually when it's an errant throw by Burrow, there's some other explanation. Correct. Other than he just <laughs> misfired. They bring a blitz. Is this the record? Tire! Flag down. It's a touchdown for Jamar Chase. And if it stands, it's the 44th touchdown pass of the season for Jimmy Burrow's son, That's Joe, to tie the SEC the defense, record. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Uh, they put him in the slot, so when he runs this slot fade, he has so much room for Joe Burrow to put the football outside, away from the defender to the outside shoulder. When you run that from the slot, boy, you got a lot of room as a quarterback, and Joe Burrow now with uh, ties the record for the most touchdown passes in SEC history. Drew Locke threw 44 for Mizzou in 2017. And now Burrow has thrown 44 for LSU. Extra point good by Cade York. He's also made history tonight with two 50-yard field goals. First time LSU's ever had two 50-yard field goals in the same game. But here's the big record-setting accomplishment. I think Mr. Burrow knew it. <laughs> Jamar Chase with his seventh catch of the night, his second touchdown. He has 197 yards receiving. Perhaps inching closer to win, winning the Bolitnikoff Award. Award for which he's one of the three finalists, along with CeeDee Lamb of Oklahoma and Michael Pittman Jr. of USC. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Joe Burrow has had a record-setting night tonight for LSU, but so has his wide receiving core. Three different records have been broken by that duo, and there's a good reason. They are all on the same page from a chemistry standpoint. Joe Burrow got here late last year, didn't have time to work out in the offseason with these wide receivers. So this offseason, they dedicated themselves to the summer of 10,000 catches. The wide receivers worked with Joe. They wanted to get more of a culture of execution, get rid of the drops from last season. And their coach, Joe Brady and Mickey Joseph, the wide receiver coach, got them every kind of crazy drill possible so they were on target. Helen Mond comes out throwing, and it's incomplete for Courtney Davis. There's been a lot of talk about how much better Joe Burrow is in this offense is, and obviously the change in the coaching staff, the addition of Joe Brady's made a big difference. Yeah. But Joe Burrow told us the other day he didn't have any offseason yep. coming into last year to work with all these receivers. He had eight months after the end of last season to get ready for this season, develop timing and chemistry, and obviously that's been a big difference maker. Yeah, no doubt, and, and not just the development of Joe Burrow, but the development of the wide receivers. As Holly mentioned, they struggled with drops last year. They have not dropped the football very often this year, so... You know, they, they just have increased their productivity. Of course, Moss sat out with injury all year last year, the tight end. Clyde Edwards Hilaire was not as big of a factor in this offense as he is this year. So they have just raised the level of their whole offensive scheme uh, this season. Isaiah Spiller got them five. Big play. Jacob Phillips made the tackle. So here's third and five for AM in the final minute of the third quarter. Mon throws and almost intercepted diving attempt by the true freshman Cordell Flott. That was, a, that was an important possession, I thought, for Dave Aranda's defense. They gave up the touchdown. They had a couple busts in the possession before, and they come out and get a three and out, and they almost get more with the nice play on the ball by Cordell Flott. We've got two true freshmen that are going to both be great players. Derek Stingley starting at corner all year. The guy right there going to return this punt. Cordell Flott, who starts a lot in the nickel position. Braden Mann on the punt. And he took off. Yeah, well, well conceived, well timed. I mean, he had an escort. He had three lead blockers. They had three personal protectors. And you're going to see things open up in the middle. 
They're trying to push the rushers down the field, and there's a lot of room and a good decision <laughs> by Braden Mann. That's 16, and he lowered his head at the end of the run. Ran over Jatre Kirkland. And one of the best plays of the night comes from the putter. He probably didn't want to punt again after uh, having punted as often as he has tonight, eight times. To me, this is a great opportunity after that kind of a momentum play to go play action and take a deep shot down the field. Low snap. Mond. Couldn't find anyone to throw it to, and he threw it away. That's the end of the third quarter. With the score 41-7 in favor of LSU. You're watching College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. These LSU fans sell out crowd of more than 102,000. Secure in the knowledge that their team is about to finish a perfect regular season at 12 and 0. Leading 41 to 7 as the fourth quarter begins. Isaiah Spiller for Texas A&M. Good run. And a first down just across the line to make. Glenn Logan made the tackle. Well, now 140 total yards of offense for Texas A&M, and we're just starting the fourth quarter. That was the best run for Spiller, and they just could not run at all last week at Georgia. 68 yards on the ground now tonight. Miller's had a very nice true freshman season. Only Travion Williams had more rushing yards as a true freshman than Spiller has had this year. Mon slides down, trying to duck under the hit from Caleb on chase on. Spiller's rushed for 848 now in his freshman season. He just passed Mike Goodson for second highest single season rushing total by a true freshman at Texas A&M. He's not going to catch. Travion Williams, at least not tonight. Travion rushed for 1,057. You know, and he was supposed to just be a role guy this year behind Jay Sean Corbin, who you mentioned got hurt in the Clemson game, and he had to step up and be the main guy and learn as he goes in terms of pass protecting and all the other things you have to do to be a running back at this level. Pressure in the pass batted out of the air by Jacoby Stevens. The junior who plays all over the field. He was a linebacker at the start of the year. Now they list him as a safety. We visited with him during the week. He said he prefers Off to side, play side. in the On box. The defense, number 90, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Second down. Rashard Lawrence called for the penalty. Yeah, Jacoby Stevens last week had three sacks in the Arkansas game. You talk about being up around the line of scrimmage. They they utilize him in their pass rush quite a bit coming off the edge. He's become a vocal leader on this LSU team. We saw him getting very fired up at his defensive mates when Ole Miss's quarterback John Rice Plumley was running up and down the field against the Tiger defense a couple of weeks ago in Oxford. More pressure this time from Stingley off the corner. Flag down, tough run after the catch by Jalen Weidermeyer. He got banged around a couple of times, stayed on his feet. And nearly got a first down. They really like Weidermeyer. They had two freshmen tight end come in this year that they were really high on both of them. Baylor Cup, a very promising Personal freshman. Foul, face mask, grabbing the opening of a helmet. Defense. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. But they like the future of this combo of Cup and Weidermeyer. Weidermeyer was a big basketball player in high school, very athletic guy. There you see the, the face pass penalty on Patrick Queen. I'm sure they could have actually looked at that as a potential targeting call as well. Pretty tough run. You know, last week in Georgia. He had a third and five. He caught a ball like that. He was fighting for extra yardage, and the ball got ripped out, mm -hmm. and it led to a Georgia touchdown. That time, did a great job protecting the football in the midst of contact. 
Well, they'll be in great shape with Weidermeyer in Baylor Cup next year. Cup had a broken leg, and that's a dropped pass. Might be a touchdown off the hands of Ryan Rennick. Yeah, Jacob Phillips was trying to drop underneath it. Watch Jacob Phillips. He's going to try to get under this, but this is a seam route that's open, and Kellen Mond makes a pretty good throw. And that's a ball that should be caught. Right in the hands of Rennick, a transfer from Kansas. And this part of the game, is the game in hand? Yes, but what LSU is fighting and what they're battling in terms of the perception of their defense, these are important plays. And they're in attack mode all out here. Patrick Queen came on the blitz Mon threw it away and now the officials are talking about whether that should be intentional grounding well the question is going to be is if the ball didn't get across the line of scrimmage i think he might have gotten outside of the tackle box on the offense number 11 spot foul loss of down third down you know if you're gonna if you're gonna throw it away you've got to get outside the tackle box 36 and the guy and the ball has to cross the line of scrimmage. I think he got outside the tackle box. I don't think the ball got past the line of scrimmage. So the ball comes back to the 36. But they are coming after Mond yeah. with great regularity. Well, again, I think Dave Aran, I think they want to put an exclamation point on this football game from their side of the field. Well, it has been mystifying because it certainly seems like there's a lot of talent on this defense. They just haven't played up to it. Deep throw. Kendrick Rogers now with a flag down. He was trying to make a one-handed catch. I don't know if that's a flag or just something blowing across the field. Well, actually. that could be because it is a very breezy yeah. evening here at Tiger Stadium. There is no flag, although Rogers thought there should have yeah. been one. Stingley was in coverage, and Delpit was the safety coming over to help, but Delpit took a bad angle. That ball almost was caught because Delpit was a little too shallow on his help angle coming from the safety position. Fourth and very long right now. You, you're thinking zone defense here. Make A&M catch the ball in front of you and make a tackle in space. Probably a three-man rush. Fourth and even longer now. And more. False start. Offense, 65. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. This has to be exasperating for Jimbo Fisher. He really felt like their team took a major step forward in the second half against Georgia in Athens last week. Thought they'd play well. Thought it was important to get off to a good start. Just none of that happened. Yeah, a disappointing season. I know they were hoping for more than seven wins. Perhaps they'll get number eight in the bowl game, but they did play one of the toughest schedules in the history of college football, including three teams ranked number one in the AP poll. First time in history that's happened. Mon just lobbing up a Hail Mary, and Jacoby Stevens has it. Now, that, that's all Kellen Mon could do there. He got flushed out of the pocket. You throw it up to the end zone to see if you can make a play. Nothing there. And not to quibble with Jacoby Stevens, but if he bats it down, they get about 20 additional yards of field position. Ah, <laughs> as hot a team in college football as there is right now, Utah. He said, Sean, I feel very <laughs> offended. <laughs> Pass out in the flat to Derek Dillon. And I agree with you, they were number six, as we saw in the graphic this week in the college football playoff. Alabama, number five, lost. Utah's going to move up to five. Can't imagine they'll move into the top four. We'll finish this in a moment, but this timeout might be to get Joe Burrow out of the game. And it is. That's a 30-second timeout. Two years for him here at LSU last year. Certainly more than respectable. Started every game, led them to a 10-3 season. But this year, spectacular. 
One of the greatest, as we've chronicled all night in the history of the SEC, and really one of the greatest in the history of college football. And another Heisman enhancing night statistically Just for a, Joe Burrow. And a great leader. I mean, a leader of men. He really is. I mean, I, I, Holly and I ran into him in the football building the other day. He was walking. He had a, a script and a pencil. He looked like a coach, a GA. Just kind of going through the script. What a magical season for the guy. Well, the son of a coach, Jimmy Burrow, coached for 40 years after a fine playing career in Nebraska, played in the CFL for a while. And how proud he must be. Joe also off the field, graduated from Ohio State in three years. But here are the numbers. All of them conference records in the case of the 44 touchdown passes tied. A lot of really good quarterbacks who have played in this conference. Some great quarterbacks. Of course, football's changed a lot. It's become much more pass happy than it was in yesteryear. Derek Dillon catches the pass from Miles Brennan. And here's Holly. As Joe Burrow takes his bow here in Tiger Stadium, we did talk to him about the Heisman Trophy. Many people think it is his to lose. He had the perfect comment. It is all about the rings on my fingers. The Heisman would be great, but I'm about those rings. It is a championship mindset for Joe Burrow. Make yeah. no mistake. First one opportunity is next week in Atlanta against the Georgia Bulldogs for an SEC championship ring. And then one bigger that would be crowned in New Orleans a few weeks after that if they can make it there. I know he's not at all concerned with his NFL future. He went from a guy who, before the season started, might not have been drafted, in the opinion of many of the draft experts, yeah. to a guy who could very well be the number one overall pick. I think if the Cincinnati Bengals, who need a quarterback, have the first pick, how do you not take this guy? Yeah. <laughs> from Ohio, grew up in the Plains, Ohio, right by Athens, where his dad coached at Ohio U. Now Chase Young would be great as well. There's Racy McMath racing off to the races and into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, you wonder, is this salt in the wounds? Is this still feelings of the seven overtime game a year ago? Or is it just trying to get Miles Brennan some game action throw? I think a little bit of all of it. Well, they like Miles Brennan. He was a top recruit out of Long Beach, Mississippi. That touchdown pass is his first of the season. He's playing in his eighth game, including each of the last three with the big leads. He got in against Ole Miss and Arkansas and now tonight. And Racy McMath, the junior from New Orleans, has his third touchdown of the season. What a perfect name for a wide receiver, Racy McMahon. That's awesome. You like the Racy part? Yes. Yeah. I don't see that McMahon having no. anything to do with wide receiving <laughs> or running or anything. But Racy, yes. Dave York, the extra point. So that's 42 points or more in every game this season for LSU except the 23 in their win against Auburn. Everybody's involved in the party tonight here in Baton Rouge. No, oh, Auburn was just a slight underdog at home. Yeah. But if you said Auburn would give up 45 points and win, and who would have thought that would happen? You would have thought that the defense outstanding all year would perhaps shut down an Alabama offense without two. Exactly. Atkins. His ninth touchback of the game. Every kickoff has been a touchback. Here's Matt Barry. John, thank you. Studio update here with Kansas State, Iowa State. Jordan Brown's going to punch it in. Game time at 17 at this point. Right now, Kansas State looking to upset Iowa State 24 17 in the fourth. And Arizona State, Arizona, the Territorial Cup, that's going to kick off over on ESPN News. And then we'll move here to ESPN at the conclusion of the LSU game. There's Kevin Sumlin, the coach at Arizona, former head coach at Texas A&M. He was the predecessor to Jimbo Fisher. 
There's Isaiah Spiller. Boy, did they change a lot when they went from Sumlin to Fisher in terms of style of offense, Todd. They didn't even have a tight end in the yeah. program. And Joe got her. He loves to offense, throw to the tight end. 65, 10 yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Well, they were a spread, hurry up team, and yeah. now uh, Jimbo totally changed that to a offense that's pro style, and they like to possess the ball. Yeah. Well, you know, they went and found this junior college <laughs> tight end, Jay Sternberger, who, you know, didn't know what they were going to get with him. He ends up becoming having a great year last year and then getting drafted. I mean, he's in the NFL playing now. This is a disappointing night, certainly, and maybe a little bit less than what they expected from a win standpoint of the regular season. But everybody in this program at Texas a and believes the future is very bright. Jimbo told us they have another top five recruiting class coming. Isaiah Spiller out across the 40. He's a big part of that bright future. That's a 26 yard run. Well, and it's interesting, too, another nice run by Spiller. A lot of the starters on offense out for LSU, but not on defense. And again, I think they want to finish this game with an exclamation point of playing 60 minutes of high quality defense. That is not, they've been very inconsistent. They've had moments when they've played really well, they've had moments when they've been really bad. We saw one of those moments a couple weeks ago in Oxford, Mississippi. Spiller in trouble and just ducks down, realizing that he wasn't going anywhere. Micah Baskerville made the play. Well, Grant Delpit's still on the field, as you said. Important time here for the LSU defense. And he's tonight's PlayStation Player Impact ranking with a rating of 94. He is the top safety on Todd McShay's big board. Number six overall. Mel Kuyper Jr. has him as the top ranked safety as well. Jackson be the number 10 overall pick junior out of Houston, Texas. Now this this is you know they call LSU DBU and a lot of times you think of the corners but they have had tremendous safeties that have gone on to be great players in the NFL as well. Flag down. Ball start offense number 655 five yard penalty second down. Kenyon Green, another big part of the future, true freshman from Humble, Texas. The top ranked tackle in high school football last year and the number three overall prospect. We talked about another good recruiting class for Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies because they had a good one yes. this past year with Green, one of the headliners. He started every game at right guard this year as a true freshman. But this has been domination by LSU. This is an offense coming in at a and averaging 420 yards a game. And they've got 149 yards with nine minutes left. Add to that. Nice throw to Osborne. Now I want to go back to the big question again. <laughs> we said after Ohio State won so convincingly against Michigan, no way, nothing LSU can do tonight to jump back to number one. Right. I don't and I still don't, don't think they will. Not tonight. But if the question was the defense, <laughs> right? They at least answered that question for tonight against a pretty good A yeah. and M offense. It'll be interesting, and you've made the point a lot of people have. It's important to be number one. It is when the uh, college football playoff begins, because if you're number two, you're probably your LSU or Ohio State. Assuming they win out in their conference championship games, and that's a big assumption. Terry Vincent going for the interception there, and they have called it an interception. Uh, whoever's number two is probably going to play a number three Clemson, who's playing really well right now and is loaded with talent, riding the longest winning streak in the country. They'll take a look at it, but for now, it's the interception for Kerry Vincent, his third of the season. Matt Berry with a studio update. For those of you looking for Arizona State, Arizona, that is over on ESPN News. It has kicked, and we'll move here to ESPN after Texas A&M and LSU goes final. I know who's looking for Arizona and Arizona State. Matt Berry, proud son of the Grand Canyon State. They 
took a look at the interception. The play stands. The uh, third interception of the night thrown by Kellen Mond. And that is a career high. He had thrown two interceptions of the game four times. Well, but, and he's had a rough night, but this one's not his fault. Watch the crossing route here. The intended receiver is Cameron Buckley. You're going to see it better on the next shot. He just pulls his body out of the way. I don't know how he could have thought this wasn't intended for him, but at least put your arms up and try to touch the football. And Kellen Mann has struggled. He's 10 for 30, 92 yards and three touchdowns, but that interception's on the receiver, mm -hmm. not the quarterback. Chris Curry in a running back. He got the call on first down. He gets the call again, burst through the middle. Fresh legs there now. Yeah, just his 14th and 15th carries of the season. Redshirt freshman from Lehigh Acres, Florida. You know, Sean, we've been talking about playoff teams, and with Alabama losing, it's going to open up things. and. You know, two teams that are very interested and very much a part of this conversation, both playing right now. I mean, Utah is playing Colorado, kind of handling their business there. Oklahoma in a tighter ball game in Stillwater with Oklahoma State, but up by 10. Curry again for three. Leon O'Neill and Anthony Hines combined to take him down. It looks like Utah's on its way to victory. We both think they'll be number five next week. Baylor was number nine. They had an easy win, 61-6 at Kansas. It almost looked like yeah, they were trying to put it on them a little bit just to make whatever additional impression they felt they needed to make on the committee. They'll have an interesting opportunity if Oklahoma does in fact win in Stillwater to get a rematch with the Sooners. Baylor lost him at home after having a 25 point lead. Incredible comeback led by Jalen Hurts, who is also still in the Heisman conversation. Although I agree with you, it's probably Joe Burrows. So can we narrow it down now to this? I mean, I think, do you think now Ohio State, LSU and Clemson are in no matter what? Can Clemson afford a loss in the uh, ACC title game to Virginia? Would they still get No, in? I don't think they would. I, I, that's the only one I think that may not survive a loss in their conference championship game just because everybody has, for the whole season and for the last few seasons, seen them as having the easiest path to the playoffs because of the strength of their conference. So that's the one that I don't know if they could survive that. The scenarios are playing out pretty easily. Okay, let's say Ohio State loses to Wisconsin. You think they're in? I think they'll offense. still be in, okay. yeah. LSU's in no matter what. I think they're they, in no matter and what. And if they lose to Georgia, Georgia's in too. Yes. So you'd have Ohio State, LSU, and Georgia. If Clemson wins, they're in. So right. it would be these four teams that are the top four right now if Georgia yes, knocked if Georgia off LSU. Win. Right. Because Clemson's quite likely to win, might get in anyway with one loss. Ohio State would probably get in with one loss, and that would wipe out all those other teams trying to sneak into the fourth spot. LSU would be a fairly significant favorite to beat Georgia. Great putt by Zach von Rosenberg. Everything going the Tigers' way tonight. The Bulls will host the semifinals on Saturday, December 28th. Reese and the guys will also unveil the New Year's six bowl game matchups have the final top 25 rankings. It's a four hour special next Sunday a week from tomorrow starting at noon Eastern 9 a.m. Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Kellen Mond's night is over and a rough one 10 for 30 for 92 yards no touchdowns a career high three interceptions James Foster a red shirt freshman from Montgomery Alabama has taken his place. He inherits a deep hole here. They started from the one yard line. For Darian Richardson is in at running back, sophomore. Under four minutes to go. LSU about to complete a perfect regular season at 12 and 0. Trouble in the end zone. Foster That's trying to get rid of it. 
And, and I believe the referee is saying yep. he went out of the back of the end zone or stepped oh. on the back line. Rolling on the field is a Would have been grounding in the end zone results. anyway. In a safety. Yeah. I know you want to change quarterback, but that was a very tough spot to put Foster in, appearing in just his third, uh, fourth game of the season now. And he dropped the snap, his knees down, that's a safety. So even before he threw the football, his knee was down. Lost his concentration on the snap, and you're right. Probably some serious nerves in that situation. With Tigers bearing down on him, and uh, LSU putting a stamp on this one. Now they've scored with their defense. They've held Texas A&M well below 200 yards of total offense, 164 for the game. And now they've added two points to the total. It's going to be far and away the season low in total yards for AM. They had 273 last week at Georgia, and that was the season low. They're 109 below that tonight. Here's Holly. Well, guys, just before that safety, Ed Orgeron had gotten some of his defensive players together and told him to quit screwing around. With four minutes left in the game, he could sense that guys were celebrating too much, hanging around on the sideline, and he wanted them locked in and focused. He also didn't want anything bad to happen. No penalties. Obviously aware of what happened with Georgia earlier today with the player getting ejected. He'll have to miss the first half of the SEC championship game next week. Credit good coaching there. Orgeron got him fired up. Yeah, that's a uh, that, that thing with George Pickens today was ugly. And uh, if he only misses half the game next week, he's fortunate because that I wouldn't have been surprised if that would have even been an whole game suspension. And George Pickens is the the emerging as the best receiver, the most receiving threat for Georgia's offense and Jake Fromm, and he's not going to play in the first half against LSU next week. That's a big loss for them because a kid lost his composure. Trey Palmer on the kickoff return. Miles Brennan continues at quarterback for LSU. Three twenty five to go. John Emery is in at running back now number four. True freshman from St. Rose Louisiana. He gets the carry and goes up the middle for four yards. You know I'm just the focus that this football team has played with. We asked Joe Burrow we talked to him during the week. You know you're a leader and a vocal guy and you kind of everybody looks to you. You know what have you had to say to this team. He says you know we, we haven't had to say much. It's a pretty mature group. The guys know what's in front of them. They know what we need to do and, and the focus that they've played with from start to finish going undefeated here in the regular season uh, has been very impressive and a lot of that's the maturity and the leadership of the team. It's also Ed Orgeron and how he's run the program and the team and what he's built the team with. Very focused football team. Emory wrapped up by Buddy Johnson. So it's on to the championship game to take on Georgia. They did not play during the regular season. The familiar matchup in the SEC championship game last took place back in 2011. And the 2003 and 2007 seasons ended up in a national championship as well. Okay, for national championship. 2011 finished yeah. 13 and 1. When you think about what that second team was like. Second timeout for LSU. That's a 30-second timeout. That 2011 team was undefeated in the regular season. They beat Alabama, but they were a defensive-dominated football team. And then they went and lost 21 to nothing to Alabama in a rematch in the national championship game. This team has been fueled and driven and motored by an incredible offense, unlike anything that's been seen around here at LSU. Well, a 40, a 4,000 yard passer, 2,000 yard receivers, and a 1,000 yard rusher. That's an SEC first, and they were all magnificent tonight. Senior night, Burrow, <laughs> the nod to the uh, Cajun spelling. And on target, particularly early in the game, they came out firing, wanting to make a point against this AM team. They lost two and seven overtimes in College Station last year, and they made it 
emphatically scoring on their first five possessions. Burrow 23 for 32 for 352 and three touchdowns. He set the single season SEC passing yardage mark, tied the touchdown mark in a single season with 44. Brennan off target for Derek Dillon. Those receivers aren't bad either. No, not bad at all. Chase and Jefferson. Chase had seven catches for 197 and two touchdowns. Jefferson six for 55 and a touchdown. That gives them 2,549 combined receiving yards, just the two of them. And that's more than the combined receiving yards of uh, six SEC teams. More than six SEC teams have from all the <laughs> receivers. Anaya Smith, freshman, who's come on here late in the season. Sugarland, Texas. He had stood up for a while. I think everybody was anticipating a whistle that did not come. And he stopped at the 45 yard line with a minute 29 to go. Illegal motion on the kicking team. That's a five yard penalty that will be added to the end of the run. First down, Texas AM. Well, how do you see the LSU Georgia? Yeah. SEC championship game going well I think it's going to be an interesting matchup because I think it's strength versus strength you know I give the edge to LSU offensively this the edge to Georgia defense special teams I give it to Georgia because the senior Rodrigo Blankenship has kicked so many big kicks in big games even though LSU's kicked the ball well coaching I think both guys have done a great job I give the intangibles to LSU and that intangible is I just like their mojo. I just think they've got something special going on and they got a special leader in Joe Burrow. And I just, I think they'll have more offense. And I think offense will win that game uh, in Atlanta. Game day will be there as well in Atlanta prior to the conference title game. And if LSU does win, that would certainly take Georgia out of the college football yes. playoff situation with a second loss. And if that happens, then it's Utah, and perhaps it could be the winner of the Oklahoma Baylor game. And you know what? Utah is playing great right now ever since their loss to USC. But that will not be an easy out beating Oregon in the in the Pac-12 no. championship because Oregon's a very good football team. They they stubbed their toe in the desert against Arizona State last week. But they are a really good football team. Yeah. Only two losses, one to Auburn and one at ASU, Jalen Weidermeyer, the catch. The thing I didn't understand about Oregon for much of the year, I know that Mario Cristobal wanted to change it from the Chip Kelly days where they would spread you out all over the place and win with great speed. And they've got totally changed to you know, a team that's focused around the offensive line, kind of physically dominating yeah. you. And I understand you want to do that, but I also understand you have one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And I, I felt like a lot of games, they didn't fully take advantage of Herbert's talents. Yeah. You know, we were, at the end of the ASU game, they got back in it when they had him throwing the ball all over the place. Yeah. So here's my only take on that also. And this is the only knock that I have on Herbert. Tremendous arm talent, can, can throw the ball beautifully. I don't think he processes things as well or as quickly or as consistently as Joe Burrow or Tua Tungavailoa. And that's why I think those two guys are rated higher from an NFL standpoint, even though they don't possess the, the physical talent, arm talent, that Herbert does. Fourth down, Foster throws incomplete. And the LSU defense takes over on downs. Think how they finish the game isn't important to coach O. You know what he was saying right there? Do your job. Do your job. You're in the game. Do your job. Kate uh, Como. Yeah, I love his approach. And when I talked to John Robinson before the game, he said, you know, the thing that people don't realize about him, he is a great teacher. And when when anybody on his staff wants to add something or put something in, he asks the question, OK, how are you going to teach it? How are you going to teach that technique? Make sure you have that part done. And then he said on top of that, he can recruit his butt off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's always done that, and he's continued to do it here in Baton Rouge. Well, they take a knee, and LSU will finish the regular season at a perfect 
12 and 0. They're number one in the AP poll, number two in the college football playoff rankings of the next iteration to come out Tuesday night. An impressive performance all the way around. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, on senior night, you got focused for the full game. How do you describe the way this team came out here tonight? Our best game all year. We felt that we had a tremendous week of practice. I'm so proud of these seniors, so proud of our coaching staff, uh, but we're not done yet. You took Joe Burrow out and let him have an ovation from the crowd. What did you think as you saw your quarterback walk off the field for the last time here in Death Valley? I'm very proud. Uh, just proud of our people from Louisiana for welcoming Joe. Joe's brought so much to our program. We're very grateful for Joe Burrow. Thank you, Coach. Go Tigers. 13 straight wins, only Clemson and Ohio State with longer active streaks. 13 and 0 in 2011, 10 and 0 in 1958, 9 0 and 1 in 36. The only other undefeated regular seasons for LSU during the AP poll era. Let's send you to Tempe now for Arizona and Arizona State. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the Southeastern Conference.